Nigeria's potential of becoming a key player in the global gas market came to the fore at the Nigeria South Africa Chamber of Commerce breakfast meeting for September when the Executive Director for Gas Operations in the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Dr. David Ige, made a presentation on the Nigeria Gas Master Plan, areas of opportunities and government execution strategy. Actually, in terms of natural gas, we have a significant amount of gas reserves. Nigeria's position in the global uh, ranking is about the 8th or 9th. Uh, we have about 190 trillion cubic feet of gas reserves, proven gas reserves. But that's really not the issue. We've got close to 600 trillion cubic feet of additional undiscovered potential across different sedimentary basins in Nigeria that have not been explored. So if you bring those together, Nigeria very easily can be within the world's top four in terms of natural gas potential. And that's why uh, we believe that it's time for us now to focus on, on natural gas. Now, this chart gives you the history of gas in Nigeria. And it's important to understand this because, uh, you know, as you listen to the news or read in the papers, the challenges in gas, you need to understand the context in which we operate in gas. Over several years, you can see that the gas utilization in Nigeria is very, very low. Yeah, and the entire industry was built around that very little tail. The total consumption in Nigeria for several years was less than uh, 500 million cubic feet per day, which is actually very insignificant. A significant portion of that was going to the uh, power plants at Egbin and uh, one or two other places. So really, our infrastructure was developed for that level of consumption. Uh, our regulations policies were actually oil-based regulations policies and there was really nothing on ground to support an aggressive growth in gas. But all of a sudden, in the last five or six years, we've seen an explosion in demand for natural gas, uh, which is championed likely by the growth in the power sector, but also because of other opportunities in uh, gas-based industries like fertilizer, petrochemicals, methanol, uh, basically. And so it became evident to us not too long ago that the explosion that is ahead of us cannot be catered to with the kind of sector that we had at that time. The infrastructure was inadequate, the commercial framework didn't work, and uh, there was really no clear strategy for gas, hence the development of the Nigerian Gas Master Plan. In this presentation, Dr. Ige gave an overview of the Gas Master Plan of this present administration, as well as the gas-based industrialization strategy, which is designed to turn Nigeria's huge gas reserve into an enormous economic opportunity for the country is to put power in place, but the next thing is actually to industrialize Nigeria. And no country industrializes without basic things like petrochemicals, methanol, fertilizer. We have chosen the sectors because these are sectors that use natural gas as feedstock, yeah, not as fuel. Yeah, and we have a lot of natural gas. With fertilizer, you know, if we increase fertilizer production in Nigeria, because we believe that we have the potential to be the one of the world's most dominant fertilizer production centers. And we're very well on the course to do that. As we speak now, we have very structured uh, fertilizer projects that make Nigeria already the undisputed regional hub for fertilizer. There's the uh, Nagajina project, which we'll talk about in, our, in the video in a minute. There's the Indorama project, there's Brass Fertilizer, there's Notori, and there's Dangote. The combination of all of this will produce well over 10 million tons per annum of urea and ammonia by 2017-18, making Nigeria one of the world's biggest producers of fertilizer and exporters. The impact of that is straightforward. First of all, with fertilizer availability in the country, we can improve agricultural production across the entire nation. And we do that, we create improved productivity, and in each of those locations, we create agro-based uh, industries, uh, agro-processing, which creates jobs and disperses the jobs across the country. The second one is petrochemicals as well, which we're going to be doing the same. We're going to be building a world-scale petrochemical plant in, in Nigeria, not one only, but it, it, potentially more than that. And we produce polyethylene, polypropylene, and all the other derivatives in Nigeria, so that you can then take this any part of the country and start to do things like plastics, and dashboards, and whatever else that needs to be done, creating jobs and stimulating serious economic growth in Nigeria. And of course, methanol as well which adds to that. And we're also looking at uh, aluminum investors coming there. So with all of these gas-based industries together co-located, we feel that gas can truly, truly transform the Nigerian uh, economy and impact on uh, job creation for the country. Dr. Ige made further emphasis on the biggest 
gas industrial park that will be built, Sub-Saharan Africa, the Ogidibi Industrial Park, its viability and the impact it will bring to the Nigerian economy and populace. In 2011, Mr. President launched Nigeria's Gas Revolution Initiative. This initiative is part of a three-point agenda for gas in Nigeria. The first is gas to power, the second is gas-based industrialization, and the third is gas for export. The Gas Revolution will position Nigeria as the regional hub for fertilizer, petrochemicals, and methanol industries, to name a few. It will create a major economic boom and unprecedented boost in job creation. This gas revolution starts here. The gas revolution policy is to make sure that we leverage on our gas resources to industrialize this country so that we create in Nigeria that our children will be proud of. For several years, Nigeria's gas sector was known mainly for its wasteful flares. The Ministry of Petroleum, in collaboration with the Ministry of Trade and Industries, has set to reverse the trend, translating flares to dollars. Mr. President has supported us very, very strongly in terms of a three-point agenda uh, for this reform uh, process. The gas-based industrialization will ensure that gas is used as feedstock instead of its traditional use uh, as gas as fuel. The industrialization vision of the country is very simple. It's a strategy to diversify the country's revenue and uh, economy. Um, and also, it's based on the principles that no country has ever moved from being a poor to rich nation without, by relying entirely on our exporting raw materials, without having a strong industrial and services sector. Those are the two main principles. So today, we now have a new industrial revolution plan, which has about four main features. A strategic in the sense that it focuses on areas where Nigeria has competitive and comparative advantage, where Nigeria can be number one in Africa, a top 10 globally. Our intent is to ensure that over the next four to five years, Nigeria becomes the regional hub for gas-based industrialization. And as everybody knows, we have more than enough population to take output of these um, particular uh, industries in the country alone, not to mention the supply that we could achieve for the rest of the West African uh, region. As several policy interventions across the two ministries now combine to kick off a massive industrialization in Nigeria. Gas will begin to touch the real economy. In other words, it will touch the lives of Nigerians in a way that oil 
um, and gas never have. Guinea is going to provide us with a new opportunity in this country. In the sense that for the first time, we have our concept is based on industrial cities, industrial parks, industrial zones. This is going to be the first industrial park in the country. The purpose-built gas industrial park will be located in Ogidigbe, Delta State. Dr. Ige speaks further on the economic transformation plan that the gas revolution will bring to Nigeria. I mean, in terms of if you take power, for example, we've made a lot of progress. You know, although the, the demand in the power sector is huge, like you very well know, but our efforts are working now. At the moment, we're supplying about 800 million cubic feet per day of gas to Nigeria's power sector alone. This is going to increase over the next uh, four or five months to well over a thousand million cubic feet per day. And then by the end of the second quarter of next year, we'll have skyrocketed to close to two billion cubic feet per day. So, and all these are based on projects that are ongoing right now. So apart from any unforeseen project slippages, we believe that we're on course to pretty much wipe out the shortfall in the current power sector uh, with respect to, to gas supply. And then, of course, um, as we start to consolidate on uh, the power, consolidate on infrastructure, and get this initiative on industrialization going, we believe that uh, we're well on the way to very established economies, uh, like we refer to. And, you know, all that is required to make that happen exists here. In the country, the resources are there, so we've got the gas, we've got the uh, the investor interest, and we've got a, a plan and a policy that is very, very clear in terms of what it wants to do, how it wants to do it, and it's been implemented one step at a time. So I think that we are, as a nation and as a people, uh, set to see some major, major transformation of the sector and of the economy in, in a very, very short course. It is expected that the gas master plan will not become another beautiful, thought out, well-designed project that will end down the road. With consistent public-private sector interplay, this could become Nigeria's trigger to socio-economic transformation.